This is a knife I'm sure if Jim Bowie were alive today would be proud to own. This is the Nomad Camp Knife from Work Tough Gear and designed by Zeke Minacho. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Vic at Work Tough Gear for sending out the Nomad Camp Knife so that I could share it with you. I'd also like to thank Zeke Minacho for the time he spent with me online chatting about his design so I can get a more fuller understanding of everything that's involved here. And it was extremely helpful, so thank you, Zeke. So in the opening, I said this would be a knife that Jim Bowie would be proud to own. Why? Why would Jim want to own a knife that looks like this? Well, it comes out of the design inspiration that Zeke got. Zeke looked at the historically what a buoy was all about and what it was intended to do, and he tried to incorporate those features into this design. So basically, he was looking for three things. He was looking for a knife that would chop like a hatchet, stab like a dagger, and still cut like a kitchen knife. So that's the question we're going to try and answer, well, at least part of it anyway, is whether this knife is capable of all those things. Now, I always put my knives to an additional task is, will it do bushcraft? Of course, that's what we're going to demonstrate today is, will it do bushcraft? So to begin, we first have to go in and take a closer look at the knife, talk about its features as well as its specifications, and that's when we'll do some testing. All right, let's talk about the sheath so I can get that out of the way and then we'll start focusing in on the knife. Like all the knives that I have received from Work Tough Gear that come in Kydex like this, just perfect. They're, they're simple, but perfectly well molded. Every little detail has been caught in the sheath and it worked. Well, let's just listen to it as it snaps into place. I, I'll talk about the lanyard in a moment, of course. Yep, <laughs> I'd say that's nice and secure. It's not coming out and it's got the nice thumb ramp to push off with. Okay, now here's the only thing. When it arrived, all I got was the sheath. It, there was no way to attach it to a belt. To be honest, I wouldn't wear this on a belt anyway, but there was not, no uh, belt attachments or anything else. So I ended up trying to do something with it that I could carry it and that was I created a bit of a bandolier. So it's just a mock-up. It's not something I don't think it'll be my long-term thing, but when I put it on to carry this over to where we're going to do some chopping with it, you'll see how I carry it around my body. And it does make it a little easier to carry it. Uh, it also did come in a nice padded folded zippered case, and that was how it arrived to me. So maybe that's just the way it's intended. It's not necessarily intended to be worn on your belt or across your body like I do when I'm in the woods. In fact, when I talked to Zeke, his whole intention was toss this in the back seat of your, of your truck under or under the seat of your truck and have a knife that's always available to you. That's what it was all about, a hard use knife. Really, I guess if you're putting it under your seat, you don't need any type of a carry mechanism. All right, let's get the sheath out of the way, bring the knife back in. I said I would talk about the lanyard and I will in a few moments time. It's a little bit different. I I just didn't pick up on it. This is one of those things that Zeke had to explain to me because it was just outside of my experience. All right, let's go through the specifications first. And I had to, let's see, I've got to hold the knife way back here so you can see the whole thing. Overall length, 15.7 uh, inches, 399 millimeters. Blade length, 10 inches. Yes, it's a big knife. 10 inches, 254 millimeters. The cutting edge, though, is only 9 inches. Of course, there is this choil right up here, which is 635 millimeters. It is obviously a full tang fixed blade knife. I don't think that was necessary to say. It is a high saber grind, very little flat. It's almost a full flat grind, but there is just a little bit of flat up here. And it is finished off with that micro convex grind that Vic does so well. Polished, polished micro convex grind on the edge of it. It's very, very strong and very, very sharp, of course. Speaking of sharp, yes, the spine is very sharp. It'll strike. It's almost got a burn on it. My fingernail actually catches on it. That is a nice, sharp, very functional spine. Uh, blade description. It has a full, like I did another re uh, review recently that was uh, another work tough gear. It was the EDC, and I kept referring to this continuous curve on the knife, and yes, this has that continuous curve as well. I'll go over again what is the value of that continuous curve, but let's just finish off the specs for it. So steel is Bowler K340, and it's sharp, or hardened to 57 to 59. You can probably get more out of Bowler K340, but this is a chopping knife. You don't want it any harder than that. You don't want to risk chipping it out. I've not had any chips on this, but you know, it shouldn't be really, really super hard. It does have, this is a different, and I don't know if this will pick up. Can it, does it, hopefully it's picking up. It's called a satin spatter. So it's a satin finish, but it looks like it was 
had acid or something sprayed and dripped on it just to give it a little bit of a pattern, just a little bit different, right? The, it does have the black and brown G10 handles on it, and I'll talk about the, the shape of those and the functionality of those in a minute. Weight, this is a heavy knife, 25.6 ounces, 726 grams, but if you add the sheath in, 31.4 ounces or 890 grams. Okay, let's go back to the blade, talk about some of the features. And of course, as I talk about the features and we move down to the handle, you have to understand that it is an integrated system. They are supposed to all work together, but you have to break it down somewhere. So what makes this so stabby, stabby like a, day, like a dagger? Reverse tanto. Zeke really likes using this reverse tanto, and I can see why. It is super strong at the tip, all kinds of metal right up here. No fear of damaging the tip on this by using it for stabbing or poking at things. But uh, yeah, it still remains very, very strong, but very, very pointy. So that's what a tanto is all about. Having the tanto reversed or on top of the blade means you don't have any uh, interruption to the curve on under here. And that means for better slicing. And that's what it's all about with a big knife like this is slicing. So does it chop? Well, I think that can go without saying. Look at the weight forward design of this. Bit kookerish maybe. It has a lot of weight forward right here in the center part of the blade. That's where it's at its widest. And uh, yeah, so it's like a almost like a point, a rounded point down here. That's the contact point if you're doing any chopping. But also look at the handle. See how the handle is offset a little bit? That gives you that weight forward so it gives a better chopping angle as well. I think I missed something on the specs on this. Oh yeah, thickness of this thing. Yeah, you've got to talk about the thickness when I talk about the weight. 0.25 of an inch. Yes, that is one quarter inch thick, which is 6.35 millimeters thickness. So it is a very, very thick blade. You will, uh, you know, of course, I'm going to be putting all the specifications in the video description. So don't try to focus in on them too much. Let's focus in on the design. Going back to the handle, you can tell that this is a chopper for two reasons. One, as I said, look at the offset handle grip like this. It full, it's down towards the back, gives your, handle, your hand and your wrist at a better angle when it comes into contact with whatever it is you're chopping. Quite an exaggerated beak back here, and that's to hold your hand from sliding off the back as you chop. When we go through this way, it's very, very thick through. There is a slight palm swell through here, but not a whole lot. But you know what's missing is there's no palm swell through here. And again, you don't really need it. But there are two choils, a little bit of a choil here and a lot of a choil up here. Now that choil is not for chopping. This one is, that's not. There is a lanyard hole at the bottom, at the base, uh, and we'll talk about why I chose to put the lanyard up here. There is no protruding pommel on this. By the way, it does have black liners. You can see it's very, very attractive, right? And the scales are removable. It has three Torx uh, pins uh, type of to, on the scales itself. Uh, okay, there are thumb scallops. I wondered about that. Do you really need thumb scallops on a knife this big? Well, I don't know if you need them or not, but it does add to the maneuverability and the control I have on the knife when I hold it like this or in reverse grip. And I can actually use this in reverse grip. I wasn't sure I would with that big beak back here, but my hand actually, it comes out the back and most people will have an even easier time hold it in reverse grip. That's only half the story, right? The other half is, can I actually use it, the big knife like this, in reverse grip? We'll get to that in a few minutes' time. So, two more things. This carries over from the EDC. There is a divot here for your thumb, so it's more like a thumb stop, a bit of a reference, and that's okay, it works there as well. And there is this choil, so you can actually get your finger ahead of the uh, guard here and get here very comfortably. Well, okay, that's a relative term. It's comfortable for my finger, I don't necessarily find a comfortable back here. Now this is slightly radius. There's no sharp edge here. So it's not like it's gonna cut me, but if I'm doing feather sticking and you wanna get as close to the edge of the blade, it's a lot harder from back here. You don't have quite the same power. Let's say my finger's a piece of wood as you would if you got up here. So the question is, is it comfortable to use for carving wood up here like that? Yes and no. I can, but not for extended period of times. It's just not the style of handle uh, that I would like to have. However, if you've got a big knife and you're trying to use it for fine carving, then a choil is almost a mandatory thing. Uh, I think it has something to do with this divot that makes it just a little bit more difficult for me. All right, I promised to talk about the lanyard hole and why the lanyard is up here. Um, I was aware of this. I just It's just not something that I had any experience with, and that is blade sports. I'm sure most of you are aware of blade sports. I was, I was, but I, you know, again, it's not something I watched a lot of, 
Blade Sports has a lot to do with a regulation size chopping knives and all the tasks that they can do with them, like chopping two by fours, but very fine cutting, like cutting ping pong balls and straws and rope and things like that. And this is something that came out of that sport itself, is to have the lanyard forward up here. It's, it's not necessarily a balance point, but the way it is used, and I haven't got it adjusted properly, is your hand just goes through and down onto the grip and you get extra grip. I won't be able to slide back off the back of the uh, pommel back here. So it keeps the, the knife in my grip, but, but even more important is if I have to let go of it for whatever reason, it's not gonna swing and come down towards my leg. It's gonna hang directly underneath my hand. So it is both a functional thing and a safety thing to have it right there. And I've been playing with it. I'm starting to appreciate it. It's just different. I was, it's nothing I've been used to, but it does work. So just to, you know, if you want to know how well this works, if you watch some blade sports, uh, you'll understand just what this is all about. I'm starting to appreciate it, as I said. Okay, a couple more comments, and then it's time to start doing some testing. Okay, it is quite wide through here, quite thick through here, which I like but it is a little bit blocky up here. It is radius, it's not like a 90 degree angle or anything else, but here's where I found, I like the width when I'm chopping, but I think I'd like to have it just a little bit more rounded here. Easy enough for me to do myself, but I want it rounded enough so that it doesn't, when it's in my hand, the web in my hand doesn't feel the shock at those two corners. Not hot spots so much, but just impact spots, if that's the way to describe it. Okay. That's the design. Oh, one more thing about this blade. And uh, the second question was, or the first question is, is it stabby? Oh yeah, it's stabby, as you can see. Is it choppy? Yeah, it's choppy with all that weight forward. Is it slicey? Well, let's go back to the continuous curve on the knife. So it is slicey this way, but it's also slicey. Well, I used it in the kitchen just, be just because, right? You had to test it. It's nice like a chef's knife would be, a big knife like that. But it's also because the curve is towards the center down here, you can use it in draw cuts. So you can cut fruit, vegetables, meat, actually a lot of things, wood included, and you get uh, quite a bit of control. And the last thing, of course, is because of the blade size through here, its center point is below the handle. So when your hand comes down on the kitchen cutting board or even on a piece of wood, you're gonna have your contact point below your knuckles. So you're not jamming your knuckles into the table or the counter or whatever, or the log that you're chopping. Yeah, so that's the design. Quite complicated when you think about it. So, so much to see and understand in this knife. But what's more important is, how does it demonstrate? How does it function? Well, let's start with that. All right, I don't think there'd be any question how well this splits when batoning. If any knife has ever been built for batoning, it would be this knife for sure. But uh, what I would sooner do is show you how it chops. Now, I'd love to be able to show you how you can chop rounds like this down through, but I don't have the rounds to do it with, and I don't have the anvil or the board to do it on. So I will do two types of, well, one I'll do batoning, and then there's a down tree that came down in a recent storm not too far from here, and that's where we'll do the chopping. But first, let's get through the more regular tasks that I like to do, which is batoning. Make sure we are in frame for this. Uh, there's no question that this is spanning that log. Let's just turn the angle a little bit. Look at this. Huge. Now, here is a thing about using a big knife like that, getting it started. Because of the width of the blade itself being at a quarter inch, it takes a little bit more to get it started. But once it gets started, That's when the width works in your favor, like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is finish splitting these rounds down into some finer pieces so we can do a few more demonstrations with them. All right, staying with my tradition of making tent pegs, well, let's make a tent peg using one of the splits I just use the knife for it. Here's the only thing about the lanyard there. You gotta get it out of the way uh, so it doesn't get caught in anything you're doing. Just gonna give a light tap here, cross batoning. This is not intended to prove the strength of this knife. I don't think there's any question that that knife is strong enough for doing that with. It's more about just showing how easy it is to clean it out. Now, here's the thing about using the big knife. When you start to push down, there's always a bit of resistance. And then as it slices, heavy weight knife like this has momentum. 
try to make it really short because otherwise you're going to split right through all your work. Stay on the log mark. And this way, a smaller knife has a bit more control because the momentum won't get away from you when you're using it like this. All right, notch. Now, normally I use my knives in reverse grip for a chest lever when I'm putting the point on. Kind of doesn't make sense to do that with this knife, does it? What makes sense is to use it for chopping. Actually had a point and cut it off by mistake. All right, so yeah, that's the easier way to make a tent peg with a big knife like this is to chop the point in it. All right, how about feather sticking? All right, let's see if we can approximate a feather stick. A few curls on it. Just looking at one of the splits I made, little knot right here in the center. Normally that gets in the way of doing feather sticks. So what I think I'll do is I'll work on the outside edge. Normally you want to work on the inside edge because that's where it's driest. Normally wet on the outside, but this feels pretty good. I think it'll work for it. So again, here is how this is intended to be held, is using that choil and that divot for my grip to be in. And I guess what I'm saying I don't uh, really like about it is that that's where the web of my hand is sitting, is right in that divot. So I spoke to Zeke about this, and he did tell me that he has, well, there is a knife in between this and the EDC. It's called the field knife. So it's, it's a seven inch blade where this is a 10 inch blade. And he's designed that one with two blade styles, one with a choil and one without. And his, I asked him why, and he said, well, without a choil for my Northern friends, this, the Canadians. So I guess it's just the way we like to use our knives. And maybe I'm just an example of it. I can use a choil, I just prefer not to have a chore because I just find it a little comfortable across here. So that's not the question today. It's not whether I'm comfortable, it's whether the knife will do its chore. So let's see what we can create with it. So finding that edge. So the same comment I made a minute ago about trying to clear out a notch with this knife and being cautious not to push too hard because the momentum of the weight will go right through where you're working applies here. You have to have the control over the weight to keep it from going right through your work and taking all your curls off of your stick. And you can see I've got all my curls going off to one side because I'm running my knife down like this. It's slicey, it's just a little harder. Let's see if I can do that down at that angle. Well, I can, I'm just not getting the length. Let's see if I can move down that. And you can see where I'm doing the work. I'm not out at the tip. That is just too long, too hard, too, no, no control. All the work is done right up close to here. So can you feather with this? I'd say, yeah, you can. Is it the best knife for feathering? It's certainly not the best knife for feathering, but it will feather nonetheless. All right, now the big show. Let's do some chopping with this thing. All right, it is really, really windy and I'm trying to shield the microphone from the north wind coming down the lake right here. Um, so here's the tree, dead tree. It is a spruce. We're talking four inches four and a half inches in diameter. Been down a little while, but not so long. It still has its distal branches on itself. Uh, it should still be plenty hard. Should not be an issue at all for this knife. I'm standing a little bit sideways just to kind of block my shield or shield the microphone from the wind. But I did want to show you how I have this set up for a bandolier. The knife does hang over my shoulder, gets out of the way. I can push it around my back. It's around the front. It is hanging upside down, but that's because of how the attachment points on the Kydex are. So, we're going to take it out, take it out of the sheath, push it around the back, and I am going to set it up for the lanyard for blade sport style. Yeah, that feels pretty good right about there. Again, I'm not going into detail on how that works on it because uh, I'm not an expert on it and there's so many people that can do a better job of it. 
So it allows me to get all the way back to the pommel, but no further. That's the trick. You won't want to go any further. So I get most of the swing. So first off, let's just get rid of some of these little branches in the way here. Boy, they're resistant. That's better. Have to come at them from the right angle, don't you? All right, I've said before in other videos, I don't do a lot of chopping with knives. Reason being, I don't see it as the best use of my physical energy. I would sooner saw this than chop this, but you know what? It is fun. It is fun until my shoulder starts hurting. 65 year old shoulders that have gone through enough damage. So probably another reason for not doing a whole lot of chopping. Just the same, it is still fun. So let's take uh, a whack at this literally and see how well it does. Man, that's almost an inch into the tree. All right, there you go. Yeah, that was a lot harder. Smooth cuts where it went through. All right, will it chop like a hatchet? Actually, I think it'll do better in it than a hatchet and safer than a hatchet. All right, maybe one more demonstration, some scraping, and then we'll wrap the video up. Do you know, I don't know if I should credit Ray Mears with this or not, but I heard a quote that Ray said one time, uh, he may have quoted it from somebody else, and that is, firewood will warm you three times when you cut the tree down, when you chop the wood up, and then when you burn it. So just chopping that tree down or through with this, that warmed me up considerably. Yeah, okay. That aside, let's talk about scraping for a minute. So using a big knife like this for scraping is uh, a little challenging to say the least because you've got so much metal moving out here. So if you're running it down the piece of a wood to get wood shavings or, fair, or uh, fat wood like this, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, you can do it. It just takes a little bit more control so that you don't smack and lose everything all over the place. And then when it comes to the ferrocerium rod, it's even more challenging because good chance you'll smack your fire lay and just send everything flying. I find it very difficult. The method I like to use for a big knife like this is to take it and lay it down like this and then run the ferrocerium rod over it, directing the sparks into the pile. It's a little bit of practice like that. I'm doing it right on rock, that's not a good idea. I'll have to try this on a piece of wood here. Okay, I will give this a try. There's no guarantee that this will work. Let's see if I can do it on the back of this old log here, if it's gonna work for me or not. Again, I'm not a, not a fan of using big knives for this. I would probably just reach in and grab a pocket knife first before I did this, but let's give it a shot and see what we can do. All right, now that I've got a few curls, see if I can keep them without the wind blowing them off. Set my knife across the wood, angle the top of the knife forward, get down pretty close to where the pile of shavings are. Something tells me this isn't gonna work out too well. Ah, because my curls or my shavings are gonna There, sorry, it almost lost my shavings, but I got them. So you, that is the more efficient way of using a big knife like this to light shavings with a ferrocerium rod. All right, now I think we can wrap this video up. All right, some final thoughts on the Work Tough Gear Nomad Camp Knife. First, I think, let's see if we can answer the question. Does it meet all the design criteria of modern Bowie? Well, there's no question in my mind that it does. Super stabby, super strong tip. Absolutely. Weight forward, a whole lot of thin, not thin, thick metal coming to a very thin edge with, but still strength in it so that you can chop with it combined with that angled grip. Will it chop like a hatchet? I'd say better than a hatchet to be quite honest. Will it work as a 
a chef's knife or a kitchen knife. Well, I can't demonstrate that out here in the woods, at least not today, but I did do that exactly that at home. I did some food processing, cleaned it all up, of course, first. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's like a huge butcher knife in the kitchen to use this. You can rock it very nicely. You can draw, cut it through things. Uh, yeah, so it makes a big kitchen knife but it will work like a kitchen knife. It'll work like a chopper and it does have a very pointy edge that you can stab with. Still fine enough that you can work on it. Now, mind you, there's a huge lever behind it, so it does take a little bit of practice working at it, but you can work with this as a carving tip if you're looking to do that with. So, is it a modern Bowie by that definition? Yeah, absolutely it is. Is it a good bushcraft tool? Here's where things get difficult. To me, a bushcraft knife is something much, much smaller than this. Uh, you can use big knives for doing bushcraft. One, Ron Hood said one time that you can do all the tasks of a small knife with a big knife, but you can't do all the tasks of a big knife with a small knife. So yeah, that's true. However, to finish that quote off, you can't do them well, not as well as you can with a smaller knife. So a, a dedicated or purpose-built bushcraft knife will outperform this for bushcraft tasks with the exception of splitting wood and chopping. It's debatable whether those are a bushcraft knife tasks. That's what an axe is for for most people, including me. Doesn't mean that this won't do it. Doesn't mean it won't do all of those tasks. I just don't think it does them as well as a smaller belt knife will. Now, I just wanna talk about ergonomics on it for a few seconds before we close out on this. So I really do like this blade sport style of a lanyard. It's something I think everybody should look into and expect that you'll see more and more knives using the lanyard hole up here to, got a tick on me. Goodbye, tick. All right, ticks are out, right? Be careful. So yeah, so you're, you're gonna to need to uh, learn a little bit more about using this. It is very effective. I'm coming to appreciate using a lanyard like this. The handle, the be birds or the beak back here does help to keep my hand from sliding off. Uh, I still find it blockish. I still find it blockish. It's not sharp edged, but it's blockish enough that I felt it as I chopped in my hand. In fact, actually, there's actually some red marks from it there. Could I have used a glove? Yeah, of course I could have used a glove. I like to see if I can do it without a glove, and then if I really have to use the glove, then I will. So I guess that it should be designed so I can do it without a glove. If you watch the blade sports, they're not wearing gloves. At least I don't think too many of the competitors are. Okay, I really like this knife. The work that Zeke put into the design really shows. There are so many different features. I can't imagine how much time it took for him to come up with this, but to meet all the design criteria that he was looking for in one design like this, yeah, it, it's a really nice design. Is it a knife I'll carry a lot in the woods? No, <laughs> it's not. It's just too big for most of the tasks I'll put it through. But it doesn't mean I don't have fun using it. Doesn't mean that it's not usable for the tasks that I did today. It's just not my preferred knife. So just trying to make it real here, right folks? But it may be exactly what you're looking for in your area, your climate, and the type of use for your knife. This may be exactly the right tool because it does all the things that Zeke wants it to do perfectly. Let's put it that way. Okay, that's everything I have to say. Those are my thoughts on the Nomad Camp Knife from Work Tough Gear designed by Zeke Minacho. I'd invite you to give me any comments or any questions about the knife in the comments section below. I will put all the specifications for this knife as well as the links to where it can be purchased in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.